Hi folks, it's uh, Thinking Slow here. So I'm going to try and do a quick video about um, some COVID statistics here. And this takes us back really to the uh, start of the channel. And the core purpose was to uh, look at statistics and show that uh, parts of the government narrative were not true. And uh, obviously on this channel, on this platform, we have to be quite careful what we're saying. So this is quite heavily self-censored. Uh, the good thing also about this video is there's actually a written document that goes into the details of the numbers and where, where the data's from. Uh, so we don't need to labor all of that stuff here. We can just look a bit more at the conclusions and the charts. So um, let's, let's get straight into it, basically. We're going to look at uh, the hospitalization and what's the impact of vaccination on hospitalization without getting into a lot of uh, detail. So to begin that story, it's necessary to sort of rewind and um, think about what we were told uh, in terms of effectiveness against infection. And you know, this is quite literally a screen grab of the original uh, authorization for vaccine, uh, just so people don't forget what it was. Um, but we were told then that um, there were 162 cases in the placebo group versus eight in the vaccinated group, which provided a figure of 95% uh, effectiveness for the, for the vaccine. And importantly, um, this authorization was based solely, solely on effectiveness against infection. Uh, there, were, there were no real parameters in there to do with uh, hospitalization or deaths. And uh, Peter Doshi has done a lot of work on that from the British Medical Journal, uh, explaining all of the questions about the um, limitations of the trials, that actually the real key questions were never in there. It was, it was all about reducing uh, infection. So let's fast forward. Uh, this is about December 2020. Um, let's fast forward to where we are now. And this is uh, case numbers per 100,000 of the relevant group. And this is taken directly from the UK uh, Health Security Agency. This is the report for week 12, uh, 2022. Um, and we'll provide a link uh, at the end of this so you can, you can look for yourselves. It's on page 46. Uh, the only thing we've done is turn it into a chart, uh, but the data is theirs. And you can see here that the incidence of COVID, i.e., you know, how much COVID per 100,000 um, is four times higher in the three dose vaccinated, which is the black line, versus the unvaccinated, which is the white line. So, you know, for example, 30 to 39 age group, you've got three and a half thousand um, cases of um, COVID in, in that uh, four week period. Uh, per 100,000 of three-dose vaccinated versus about, well, you can see here, it's going to be about 900 um, cases per 100,000 of unvaccinated for this period. So this number roughly is four something times uh, the black bar versus the white bar. So, <clears throat> you know, this is a complete reversal, not only not only are the uh, unvac uh, not only the un uh, the vaccinated not having or not seeing effectiveness really they're getting the reverse situation where the incidence is very very much higher in the in the vaccinated group and this has been uh, a pattern for quite a while now we've been looking at this for months now and, and the the numbers move up and down and change around but basically the conclusion that the incidence in the vaccinated is higher hasn't changed and we want to call out here actually a self-proclaimed uh, expert, this guy Jamie, uh, who is on GB News all the time. He's often making incorrect statements and his last one from yesterday was the chance of having COVID are the same between the, un between the unvaccinated and, vac and the vaccinated. It's completely untrue. It's completely against all the data sets from England, Wales and Scotland. Uh, and unfortunately, this is something he does, but he's um, because he's a talking head on media, people will follow that and listen to that, but it's completely wrong. Um, so let's move on to the hospitalization data. Um, this now is the last week um, of, the, of the data that they published by the Health Security uh, Agency. 
and I think it tells you something that they've stopped publishing yet. That's already a bit of a clue to what's going on here. But what this is showing is uh, admissions to uh, A&E, well, I'm not quite sure what it's called now, what's it called? Uh, emergency, uh, basically emergency care, right? It's not A&E anymore. Emergency care uh, admissions over that four-week period uh, divided again by 100,000 of the relevant population. And again, we're not changing anything, doing anything. This is a screen grab from week 13 report, which is linked here as well. But the hospital admissions in absolute numbers are, are the largest, obviously, for this elder age group from sort of 60 onwards. And, and of course, you know, they get higher and higher, 80 over being the highest. And here you can already see, you know, the rates, <clears throat> even without any other calculations, the rates are almost identical between the uh, not vaccinated and the vaccinated at this el older stage group. So, um, you know, that, that's already really, we don't need to say a lot more than that, but, um, you know, the idea that you're getting a significant benefit uh, being vaccinated versus unvaccinated for hospital admissions is not borne out by this data. Yes, there is some benefit here uh, at these lower age uh, age groups. But here, you know, again, the, the difference is, I mean, it's not night and day. There's certainly a difference. And the important thing is the absolute number of admissions um, are quite low for, for these age groups. And well, let, let's look at another chart and I'll explain why this is important. This is, for me, not so much a question of uh, get the vac vaccine or don't get the vaccine. This is a question of um, government policy and a recent paper that we'll have a look at, looking at new ways to punish those people who decided not to be vaccinated. And the primary reason given for that punishment was they're a burden on, on society. And, you know, looking at, at these rates, um, you can tell that actually in terms of um, uh, in terms of admissions to emergency care, uh, there's really not a huge amount of difference and there's absolutely no basis whatsoever to seek to find ways to punish unvaccinated people. There's no argument at all uh, that they providing that they that they have a greater burden on society and therefore should be punished. It's completely outrageous. But we'll look at that paper separately. So uh, that was, you know, what we looked at before was uh, just copy pasted from the, the Health Security Agency. And one thing they, they always do is they always omit uh, to include the rates of, uh, this is the same, uh, the same metric, so emergency care admissions. Uh, they always omit uh, the what's happening in the partially vaccinated, and we did that. We were one of the first to do this um, in 2021 by actually going into the data and calculating what does this mean for the partially vaccinated. So um, it's in it's in the paper on the website, which is linked that explains how we've done this. But uh, we we take two data sets and we ended up calculating the. Uh, presentations um, to to emergency care over that four week period for the two dose vaccinated, and you can see for the two dose vaccinated that incidence rate is much much higher than the unvaccinated uh, for all these age groups over sixty. Um, and if you then do a, and then, and then it actually becomes higher still for the single dose vaccinated, but we we haven't put that in here because it gets confusing. So if you do a sort of blended all-in rate for, okay, here's all the uh, accident, uh, sorry, all the emergency care admissions for the vaccinated. So all of them added up together, one dose, two dose, three dose, per 100,000 of the population of any dose of vaccine, one, two, or three, you end up with an incidence rate, which is very, very similar to uh, the unvaccinated. So you get, the, you know, you take a big share of this low rate for the three dose, add in a slight weighting for a higher number for the two dose, and you end up with a sort of blended average about here somewhere. So, you know, what we're saying really is uh, that this, uh, this very small delta in, in this age group, for example, in 80, becomes even smaller. In fact, it's wiped out by the time you add in these higher admissions for the two dose group so 
you know, the, the, the story that uh, you're going to get radically better outcomes um, having the vaccine in terms of hospital admissions is not borne out by this figure at all. But what could happen is a very slippery argument that it's less severe. Now, if you what could be happening is you, you could be getting four times more higher incidence of COVID in the vaccinated. OK, it's less severe. But then you're ending up at an, at an, an uh, emergency care admissions at the same level as the unvaccinated. So th does that make sense? You first multiply up by four to get four times more cases and then say, OK, they're less severe. So you sort of divide by four to end up with the same number of emergency care admissions in the vaccinated group versus the unvaccinated. So again, you know, what I wanted to say here is this is not a question of having it, not having it, but this is a question of essentially the lie that the unvaccinated need to be punished in some way. And we'll look separately at this new proposal about taxation, but of course you've had passports and excluding unvaccinated from public places and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's really no justification whatsoever for any of that. I think there's no justification as a matter of principle on, on an informed consent basis. But even if you, if you go beyond that and start looking at statistics and numbers, these numbers don't support any conclusion that says the unvaccinated are an undue burden on the health system because of their status as unvaccinated. These numbers prove not exactly the opposite of that, but they prove that there's no difference or a very minimal difference for all of these uh, age groups. And it's these age groups, obviously, that are getting uh, admissions uh, into emergency care. There, there are some here, but they're small in, in a relative sense to this grouping over 60. And again, the paper's on the website. You can so you can look at the details and check for yourselves where it's all come from. So just going back then, these are the these are the vaccine vaccine effectiveness uh, assumptions that uh, were being used even in 2022. This is from week one. Uh, looking at hospitalisation, they're still talking about 95 to 99 percent effectiveness against hospitalisation. So. In theory, you'd be getting a sort of 100 uh, unvaccinated being hospitalized to every one vaccinated. But I mean, looking back at this chart here, you know, you can see the incidence is basically identical or very similar between unvaccinated uh, white and vaccinated uh, black. Particularly, as I said, if you do a blended figure here, there's really no difference. So, you know, they're still promoting uh, these figures that just don't make sense uh, compared to population level data. Um, and then just before leaving this, um, you know, th there are some counter arguments. And one of them is, is quite a boring statistical argument about the NIMS population versus the ONS population. So that really centers around um, a, a sort of form over substance game where you you basically use the ONS uh, population numbers which will reduce uh, the number of people who are unvaccinated because this is calculated from total population minus the number of people vaccinated. So if you reduce the number of the total population and you use this as a, uh, this is a derived figure and it's calculated from total population, you, you reduce total population you reduce unvaccinated. When you reduce the number of unvaccinated, you push up the incidence level, obviously. Um, and this is like technical stupid games, uh, in my view, uh, trying to pick and mix uh, different data sets. Uh, and, and the main thing is just to avoid, you know, the real conclusions. And a lot of, a lot of whatever official narrative comes out, it doesn't explain this. It doesn't explain why this is like this. They avoid the question by pl playing these statistical tricks and those are described a little bit in the paper. Um, there's just no way of getting away from the fact that the incidence rate is roughly the same for unvaccinated and vaccinated for um, uh, admissions to emergency care. There's basically very little difference, at, especially at these older age categories. So, you know, this, this thing here looks completely unrealistic. 
Um, and the, there's some other explanations they give, but none of them really are credible, to be honest. I think, you know, the only credible uh, answer is that uh, actual data always trumps assumptions, and these assumptions are wrong. So just uh, finally closing up then, um, you know, I think, I think to a large extent everyone is um, to some extent fed up with COVID because it's now in a very low infection fatality ratio, kind of exactly as expected, and we're moving on to the next panic. But um, I think we want to talk structurally quickly about why this stuff is still important, because obviously with this World Health Organization treaty, you know, these kind of... Um, mistakes, let's call them, on assumptions on uh, vaccine effectiveness against effectiveness against infection that turns out to fall apart, effectiveness against hospitalization that's not supported by actual data. So when you start making mistakes like that, when you then centralize those mistakes in the World Health Organization in Geneva, you multiply by a factor of a thousand the consequences of making those mistakes. Um, and there's, of course, very many um, democratic arguments about why we should not be signing up to this WHO treaty. But for me, this is really ultimately the globalist fantasy. You know, I, I'm not a health policy expert. I, knew, I know nothing about medicine, uh, but it's pretty clear. I think anybody understands that um, health policy is going to reflect the priorities of a country, healthcare infrastructure, age structure of the population, and health of the population. So there's no way you can have a one-size-fits-all cookie across every single country in the world. This is a one-world government fantasy that's got to be stopped because not only can the mistakes multiply by a factor of a thousand, but of course there's no way of, of stopping any of those mistakes from happening. Those people in Geneva are unelected, uh, completely untouchable by us. and as bad as England was, uh, you know, eventually there was a group of backbenchers. Surprisingly, it turned out to be the Conservative Party opposing the Conservative Party, while the so-called opposition and Labour just actually were egging the government on to be even more, uh, having even more severe measures against COVID. So, you know, there, there's still a possibility here, even though it's far from perfect, of having a sort of backbench rebellion and actually doing something to stop the juggernaut crashing into the side of the mountain. Uh, but that, that possibility will go when, when it gets to Geneva because those guys will be completely beyond any kind of uh, democratic control. So very dangerous times to be allowing that to happen. Um, so here are the links and uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. There's a follow-up video coming now uh, which will have links to some of the other films that are relevant, very relevant to what we've discussed on this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and still our motto of uh, don't stay safe, stay free, because ultimately freedom is much more important than safety. That is still the case, and we're still fighting this uh, one world government uh, medical tyranny. Okay, thank you. Bye. Hi, folks. I uh, hope you enjoyed that last video. Uh, please click the subscribe button here, which you should see on the screen, and hit the like button below here if you enjoyed the video. Leave comments, we try and answer all of the comments, and you'll see a couple of links here to films that we've made that are relevant uh, to this video here. And a couple of the films we made are classics. They're not news, so they don't, they don't age. They are analysis, and that analysis is valid for quite some time. So. You know, don't, because it's got a 2021 date doesn't mean it's not relevant. Some of the stuff we did last year and in 2020 is very, very relevant even now. So, you know, please don't ignore it. Some of it's good and it's worth watching. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.